Hello and thank you for joining me on my video series, Installing and Configuring IBM Domino 9 Social Edition on CentOS 6. I'm covering 64-bit and 32-bit uh, Linux. This is Linux installation, obviously. I am your host, Devin Olson, and this is Part 7, Domino Installation. Okay, it has been a long, long series of videos, a long ride getting us here, but we are finally here. We finally get ready to start doing the things to install Domino. So well, let's go ahead and get started. Here we are. We are um, <coughs> signed in. Here's the console. I'm signed in, and uh, let me figure out where we're at. Uh, LS, okay. I need to change to the uh, install directory. To change to the Domino 9 directory. And there I am. So I'm, I'm in the Domino 9 installation directory. Now I need to get the Domino 9 installation media. I need to get the file that I'm going to use to install it. Now if you are installing from a CD, at this point you would use your CP command to copy from your mounted folder, wherever the CD happens to be, to this local folder, so like CP, DVD mount, whatever the name of the file is, or what have you. At this point, uh, I don't have it on a CD. I'm in a virtual machine, so I need to go pull it off of a server uh, on my network. So I'm going to use the wget command, <coughs> and I want it to verify it. And the URL I'm going to go to is uh, 10.0.0.150 uh, downloads. Is Domino. Oops. Domino server nine point zero server underscore nine point zero underscore Linux underscore XS for X series. Make sure you don't try and install Z series unless you're on IBM Iron. Uh, 64 underscore EN for English, 64 for 64 bit dot tar. Oops, lowercase tar. And that should be the file. Okay, so there I am. Um, I'm pulling the file down. Um, perhaps I should have done this at a different time, or maybe we can use it a little bit of movie magic to speed up this download a little bit. I mean, it's coming fairly quick, but we've got a, another full two minutes before, a minute and three quarters before it gets here. So um, I'm going to stop talking, and then maybe we can use some movie magic and make this magically go fast. OK, um, we have downloaded the file. Yay, let's verify that it's there. Um, and look at that. There it is. Okay, cool. I'm so happy we have it here. And now what we're going to do is we need to verify that the file, the contents of the file are correct. Uh, so we're going to use the tar command. And we're going to use tar space minus t to give me a table of contents. Uh, again, I could go minus v like that, or I can just kind of combine all my arguments in one. Uh, v for uh, give me some verbose output. Um, and f to use the file name from the argument parameters. Excuse me. And I want it to tar this file, domino underscore server underscore 9.0 underscore Linux underscore EN oops underscore XS for X series underscore 64 underscore EN dot TAR. Go. Error is not recoverable. What did I do wrong? Oh, I must have typed the file wrong, so let's take a look and see what I typed. tar tbf domino server 9.0 underscore linux underscore ah, 63.en.tar. Uh, 64. There we go. Okay, cool. So there's the file contents. They're all there. I know they exist. If they didn't exist, I would have gotten a nice, or I know if there was a problem, I would have gotten an error from the tar file. So now that I know that they're all there, I'm going to use the same tar command, but I'm just going to change 
one parameter only, instead of t for table of contents, I'm going to give it the x parameter to extract the files. So I hit enter, and there we go. The files are now extracting. Um, it's going to take a minute. Let me adjust this console just a little bit so it fits better in the viewport. There we go. Okay, so all the files are in fact um, extracted and you know from from the list. And so there we go. I can see it. Part of the extraction is it created a directory, so I'll change to that directory. Six four and there I am. I'm going to change to the domino directory underneath that. And there's all kinds of cool stuff. Now, uh, what's nice here is you'll see in green it says install. That's the file we want to run. Um, but we can't just type install because this is Linux and this is one of those weird areas where Linux, I think in my opinion, um, gets a little silly. I can't just type install and have it run install. No, that won't work. That's too simple. So I have to go dot. Go back one folder, no wait, go to this folder, and now run install. Now, mind you, I'm signed in as root, so I'm installing as root. I'm not installing as the notes user, I'm installing as the roots user. Go ahead and hit enter, and we're going to follow the prompts to do the installation here. Um, and uh, it's, it's not too difficult, so here we go. First question, do you want to continue on installation in console mode? Well, yes, because I don't have a graphic installation. What's interesting here is in previous versions of CentOS, when I've done a console installation on those previous versions of CentOS, it asked me if I wanted to uh, continue, because those previous versions weren't, weren't console-only installations. They had a GUI, but I was using a, a terminal window to do the installation. Those would come up, and the default would be uh, do you want to continue in graphic mode and enter no if you want to do console mode? I don't. I want to do console mode. So do I want to continue the installation in console mode? It says the little bracket there you see with the word yes means that's the default option. So if I just press enter, it's going to accept that option. So yes, I want to continue in, in that mode. Here we go. We are doing the installation. Stuff is extracting. So here we are. The install shield wizard. Um, <clears throat> one for next, three to cancel, four to display. One is next. I want to go ahead and continue to the install. Uh, press enter to continue viewing the license agreement or just enter one to accept. I'm going to enter one and accept it. Uh, one for next. Um, this is kind of weird. I'm going to change font size here. Just a moment. There, that's a little easier, um, at least for me to see. There we go. So, uh, one for next. Uh, I did not, oh, sorry, that question, install data directories only. No, I'm not installing data directories only, so I didn't want to install them, so I didn't check it. Life is good, one for next. We're going to continue on. Uh, specify the directory uh, for the installation. This is the directory for the executables. And the opt slash op slash IBM slash domino is, in my opinion, perfect directory. So we're going to accept that and just hit enter. So here we are. Uh, do we want to do a partition server? No, we do not. Um, go ahead and hit enter again for the next thing. And here's the data files directory, local slash notes data. I don't want to go to local slash notes data. If you recall, we created our own directory, and it is a local slash demo slash domino data. And that's where we want to install it. One for next. Username root. And it's by default root because we're installing as root. But you can't, you should not ever run your domino server as root. So I'm just going to type in the name of the, of the user's account under which I want the server to run. Notes. Hit enter. And the group, if you recall, the group that we created was called domino. There we go. So one for next. Um, manual setup. 
And that, what that means is when it's when the installation is finished, it's going to allow me to have complete control and do a manual setup. Uh, I will actually end up doing a manual setup for remote, but I want to do it. I want full control. So manual setup means I'm in charge. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit enter, hit enter again. We want to do a Domino Enterprise server. That's option three. That's already selected. Hit enter and hit enter again. Here's a summary. Um, hit enter to read the next stuff. One for the next stuff again. And at this point, installation is now going to proceed. And um, it's fairly quick. I may again use the magic of movie editing to make this go faster, um, but all in all, the installation itself is, is fairly quick now that we've configured everything correctly, now that everything is, is working properly. So um, let's use some movie magic and see what happens. Okay, our server installation has completed. Um, yay, we're so happy it's all done now. At this point, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to finish a redisplay. You'll notice the command here, uh, it gives us instructions on what we need to do. It's pretty simple. So, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to do that. Um, and now the next thing we're going to do is because we're currently logged in as Domino, or excuse me, as the root user, remember we did that using the super user command, I'm going to type exit and that will drop us back one level to the previous user which is the notes user and what I need to do then as the notes user is I need to change to where my data is, cd notes, or excuse me, cd local and um, cd demo and cd domino data and from here, what I want to do is I want to run the server command with the listen parameter. And that server command is in the opt, oops, opt uh, IBM uh, domino bin folder server minus listen and enter that. And at this point now what has happened is the domino server is uh, now operational. It's listening on port 8585 for me to connect with it using a remote server configuration client. Um, and then I will use that remote server setup configuration client or remote server setup tool, whatever you want to call it. I will use that tool to do the configuration of this Domino server. Um, so that's the next step. So. Uh, this server is now sitting here happily waiting for that to happen. That's the end of this video. Please join me on our next video where we will actually fire up a remote server admin client and we will actually connect to this server and we will configure it. Uh, we'll get it all operational and then we've got a couple more things after that we need to do. Um, there's some issues with the Domino installation that we need to correct. Um, it's, it's not, they're not major problems. They just do need to be addressed and corrected so that this Domino server will, will actually run. Um, so we've got a couple more videos to go and then we're going to be done with this series. You can read about uh, XPages development on my uh, Learning XPages website, www.learningxpages.com, or you can read my blog where I babble on about sometimes interesting things and sometimes not so interesting things, or I just let it sit for months at a on end and never update it. Or you can also go to um, my buddy David Leedy's website, www.notesin9.com, where he has a whole slew of extremely cool and interesting videos on how to do extremely cool and interesting things in a notes environment. Once again, I am Devin Olson, and I thank you for joining me.